We just got done spending two full days in Rome, and Mrs. Tips and I are going to tell you the most important things that you must know before you go, the knowledge we utilized from all of our research that we did, and what we would do different. Do you think two days is enough? We'll see. I wish I would have. I'm going to call it wish I... The most important thing that we learned from all of our research was having a game plan. And that's exactly what we did. And we started that weeks and months before we even traveled over to Europe. That game plan initially was listing out all the favorite places that we want to maybe go see. And how many of those places could we possibly visit in two days? Well, our game plan to begin with was to land at 8.30 a.m drop our bags off at our Airbnb and go see our very first site, which was the Coliseum at 12.30. And I'll let Mrs. Tips here tell you about what went well and what maybe some people didn't do so well. So we did book everything um, excursion wise, if you wanna call it an excursion, um, through Viator, which is a partner of TripAdvisor. So if you trust TripAdvisor, we felt pretty comfortable using Viator and it was recommended by a lot of travel channels to book those tickets in advance. And they were right. The lines are crazy long um, outside of um, these monuments and ruins. Buy them in advance, just save yourself some headache. And I feel like we took a reasonable gamble, I'll call it that, booking like a 1230 Coliseum tour for day one. But our goal was to just hit the most iconic, our favorite things that we wanted to just bucket list um, and hit all of those at one time. So doing the Coliseum ticket also included the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill. And we also did our Vatican tickets. Now the Vatican tickets and the Coliseum tickets, there was one distinction that a lot of people will talk about is the skip the line. There is a special ticket. I think it was not a whole lot more truthfully, and it does allow you to genuinely skip the line. It saved us a lot of time um, paying just a teensy bit more money just to not have the long lines and it was hot so bear that in mind as well. And we went in May when it's not nearly as hot. I mean it was in the 80s and if you're going during July and August it's gonna be approaching 100 degrees probably so make sure you have a good water bottle with ice. Now there are people selling water bottles on the outside and they'll try, try to charge you as much as possible to get that. Um, I actually ended up buying some. I bought three water bottles for five euros. So have some cash. But there are those free water filling stations all over the city. All over. There's two inside the Coliseum that we saw. One was in direct sunlight, so that was really warm. Um, so if you have your water bottle filled up with ice and you put warm water in it, it'll turn cold. Well, the other thing to remember is, yes, a lot of things cost money, but there's a ton of stuff that is 100% free just walking the streets and it, we did a lot of offline google maps which allowed us to walk through all of these very authentic with the locals neighborhoods off the beaten path and there's also a ton of parks and things like that and some of the churches were also free to go in and and to look around and during our visit to the coliseum as well as many other places there's going to be restoration and really continue restoration you're gonna to have to be okay with this and just expect that there's gonna be construction slash restoration going on. So you might not have that perfect Instagram photo at every possible place, and you are just gonna have to be okay with that. Now for us, we really only saw it, I'd say kind of obstructing was at the Olympian, but that was really it. There was a little bit at the Coliseum, but it wasn't anything that impeded any photos. I mean, I, it's not going to be perfect. They're never going to be perfect, but I like that they're constantly trying to keep it from falling down. I mean, they're keeping it as, as nice as they can. So don't expect it to just be absolutely no scaffolding in the way. There might be. Be okay with it. And the Coliseum, the Roman Forum, and Palatine Hill, uh, those were the three things included in this ticket, took up most of our afternoon mm -hmm. and day. So we didn't really do anything else other than walk some of the streets, mm -hmm. eat some dinner, and go back to our Airbnb so we could get up early the next day and then make the most of it. And here's what we did. So one thing that, yes, you're on vacation and it might be super tempting to sleep in, plan to get up early 
because a lot of times getting up early and all of our research proved right on this, the earlier you get to some of these attractions or even cafes, um, there would be no crowd at all, no tourists, and it would just be locals. So if you want to get that best picture or get somewhere before the lines get long, go ahead and just get up and just be okay being a little tired that day to get the most out of the time in Rome. Yes, I couldn't say it better. And some of the lines, such as on day two, we did the Vatican City first time uh, early, and the lines were really long for people that didn't have their tickets. So having a set time for mm -hmm. us was perfect. And then we got out before it got insane at what they call peak time, which was, I guess it was really mid-morning-ish is when it's like the peak. And by then we were out the door, we were going to St. Peter's Square, and we were really away from that crowd of everyone trying to get to the Vatican early in the morning. Yep. So we had our favorite place to do. So it was Vatican. Mm -hmm. Spent a bunch of time in there. That's a big one. Very big. Um, we didn't get to touch the surface of seeing everything. That's for mm -hmm. sure. But then we went to St. Peter's Square. Uh, we didn't do the... I can't pronounce it. What's it called again, please? St. Peter's Basilica. We didn't go inside, but we were okay with it. The grounds were beautiful. We got to do that for free. You just, you don't have to do anything for that. You can just walk around the ginormous square and it's quite overwhelming um, in the size and it's very beautiful. But if you do want to go inside, a pro tip is to time it so you're at the very top at noon because mm -hmm. there are so many churches in there. And what we've heard from all the research we did is hearing all those church bells ring simultaneously at the top of the hour yeah. is is amazing. So when we go back <laughs> and we do it, <laughs> we are going to time it to be at the very top at noon. Uh, but you can spend a decent amount of time here if you want. Um, and we spent, I don't know, probably about an hour there. And then we moseyed on to the castle. Castel Saint Angelo, I believe. But everyone just referred to it as the castle. I guess it was probably one of the main castles um, <laughs> in that area. But it was, again, we didn't go inside, but, it, but we were okay with it. It saves us money to just pick and choose the things we really, really, really wanted to pay for versus what we were okay just looking at and doing for free. We got to do a lot of stuff for free just by walking around. And the grounds around the castle were really beautiful and they had a beautiful park, like almost hidden behind the castle that looped around and it was nothing but locals. So it was really nice just to take in the city and not be so focused on go here, go here, go here, go here, but actually enjoy our time. Uh, right, and we utilized the offline Google Maps to mm -hmm. do this as well as the T-Mobile service that my wife has, and it worked wonderful. And bringing it on to the next point is you're walking a decent amount and you're gonna come across a lot of different shops. And you might want some souvenirs or get hungry and try little dishes. While you can use your credit card, not American Express in a lot of different places. Don't like it. While you can use your credit card or tap and pay, Google Pay, you might wanna have some euros, but don't wait until you get to Rome or the airport to exchange it you're going to get a much better rate mm -hmm. if you go ahead and do it with your local bank or local credit union before you go. So in May 2024, we exchanged 400 US dollars mm -hmm. for 350 euros roughly. It was close. It wasn't the euro wasn't very far off from us at the time but for reference i just listened to someone say hey they went over there and they exchanged it mm -hmm. uh at the airport or at another place over there they gave them 200 us dollars and got 150 euros back so quite the difference if they would have gone somewhere else it would have been like 178 euros if the uh, exchange rate and you weren't getting them um, killed on fees so you, yeah you see the exchange places in a lot of different areas especially like in the shopping areas um airports things like that just do it before you leave it is kind of a pain because at some banks you have to order it in advance but just do it it's yeah. just so much a relief to just have it in your pocket because when you are in rome if you need to use the public restroom you have to pay to use 
the restroom. And a lot of times you want to have those coins, those quick little, here's a quick euro to go to the bathroom instead of, I only have a credit card and do you really want to charge a dollar? I, I, don't, I don't think you can. You're, I think you're going to be up a creek. I think you have to. Yeah. And that's not, that's not a good spot to be in. And a lot of times if you go to these little cafes, stuff is like three and 50 euro. So it's, it's sometimes it's just easier to just whip out a little bit of euros and be done with it. Now, one thing you're probably not gonna use your euros on is gonna be the public transportation. And you're gonna use a credit card and really tap and pay. So if you got a, okay, I'm not gonna show you my credit card because I'm probably show you my numbers by accident. But a tap and pay credit card mm -hmm. or tap and pay like Apple Pay or Google Pay in your card. Um, on your phone. Now, one thing to note is my wife didn't have Apple Pay set up. So I had to, I used my phone and I did the Apple Pay there, but you can only do one transaction with Apple Pay at a time. So then I whipped out my credit card, um, which happens to be the same one as my Apple Pay, and I tapped that. And that was how I bought public transportation tickets for both of us at the same time. Now, having said that, we used the bus, the train, the tram. The tram. We used <laughs> all forms of everything, except for except a taxi, taxi. We didn't actually. do a taxi. And part of the reason why is we learned that mm -hmm. it can be difficult to get them mm -hmm. in the city. Now, if you're traveling from the main airport, uh, I would consider in a group to go ahead and purchase and use a taxi strictly because there are set rates at those point in times. Mm -hmm. It's like 50 euros to go from FC, FCO airport mm -hmm. all the way to the Rome city center. Now it only cost us like nine euros each, so 18 euros. So yeah. we saved a decent amount of money and it was only like a 32 minute train ride. So not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other main reason why we wanted to do it is we just really wanted to embrace and experience the local culture. So part of our plan was where are we gonna stay? We chose to stay at an Airbnb, really for two reasons. One, it was a lot cheaper mm -hmm. and two, my friend went to Rome a few months before we were going and did a lot of research for me. So recommendations. <laughs> I didn't even research that part and he stayed in the Trastevere neighborhood. Very nice. And I tried to get at the exact same Airbnb as he did. That one was already booked. So I just booked in the same neighborhood. And let me tell you, we got lucky. I say lucky because it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, I mean, talking about, there's so many people stopping in their alleyway. Mm -hmm. It was a straight scene out of a movie, very Instagrammable. If I had Instagram, we'd be posting on Instagram. We don't have it. Okay. But I'm going to leave the link to that Airbnb in the description as well, uh, because it is just that good. And we only spent 300 euros for two nights. That's all in. Um, and that included the 45 euro, I think they call it like a cleaning fee but really it's some sort of tax, but you gotta pay 45 euros in cash to them when you arrive, um, separate from the Airbnb transaction. But it was all up front, it was in there, it was great. And when you open up the windows in a neighborhood like Trastevere, mm -hmm. you hear Italian speak, you hear kids going to school and you see them going to school and taking public transportation, just like everyone else. And Rome, if you haven't figured this out yet, it's a very walkable city. We could have walked all the way, everywhere from that neighborhood across the river. However, we chose to get on the tram and take public transportation. Uh, what were your thoughts, Mrs. Tips, about our decision to do a Airbnb instead of a hotel? I loved the Airbnb because it, it kind of makes you embrace the neighborhoods instead of just staying in a hotel, which is gonna be in a probably very popular area that's gonna be very touristy. This was not, and like very genuinely not. You hear nothing but locals. And one thing you hear quite a bit is people at all the cafes nearby. And there is a ton of cafes. So let's talk food and drink for a minute. Please. So, important thing to note, we figured this out and we did good by abiding by it till we messed up at the airport of all places but for coffee it is going to be if you do the stand or take away which means you stand at the counter and enjoy your coffee or take it outside away from the cafe meaning you don't sit at a table it is cheaper than if you sat at a table so if you're okay grabbing everything to go 
and just walking outside and walking kind of away from the cafe and enjoying it on a bench or a lot of times they have concrete walls that you can just prop on to eat your breakfast it's a lot cheaper yeah so for instance it's like one in 60 euro for a espresso mm -hmm. if you just stand at the bar and drink it the bar not a cocktail bar like here in the u.s but like just stand um, that's what the locals do if you were to sit it'd probably be like 350 or four euros mm -hmm. um and it's the exact same thing when you eat as well so if you eat let's say a sit-down restaurant and have a pizza mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot more expensive and um to eat in as opposed to takeaway service and i didn't get, get bamboozled at all until the very end when we were in the airport i sat and ate pizza <laughs> And then I'm like, why is it so much extra? And it's because we sat and ate. Um, whoops. Didn't think about it. <laughs> Live and learn. I was thought I was already out of Rome, but I really wasn't. Well, the other key thing with food and shopping, both, is going a few blocks away from all of the tourist areas. So anytime there is an attraction or a monument, going just a few blocks over, it instantly gets cheaper and the shops get a little bit better because they're more catered for locals. It's it's more authentic items and not catered to the tourist. And staying in the neighborhood of Trastevere, it's mostly locals, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about that. So, stay in Trastevere. <laughs> Link is in the description if you wanna see what Airbnb we did. Okay, so you've had your coffee, you've had your little croissant. Now you're ready to start your day. How should you dress? Well, one of the safety tips that we learned is not wearing collegiate items like where you went to school or kind of places like this says what state you're from. You've been pinned as a tourist instantly. Just try to wear things that are kind of neutral. It's just an overall just being cognizant of your surroundings. Um, for ladies and I think gentlemen as well for going into certain holy places they want your shoulders covered so if you're gonna wear a tank top um, bring a sweater or like a light raincoat just to go over your shoulders they do really enforce that quite a bit um, they won't even let you go inside um, without a cover-up and gentlemen you have to remove your hat to go inside as well and we've talked a lot about the walking 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 wear tennis shoes I can't say it enough not new tennis shoes though, because they no. will leave blisters and that's not good. Ask me how I know. And don't bother with sandals. Um, there's too many places where you can cut your feet. It, it's very uneven in so many places. Um, and ladies, get a cross body purse that goes across your body. Um, they make some that have the cut resistant strap. If you're fearful of pickpocketing, thankfully, we did not have any negative experiences, but I literally walked like with my hand over the bag um, just as an extra so someone couldn't rip it off of me. Um, but don't bother with like a shoulder bag. It's too easy for someone to put their hand in. And the other safety tip is... Yeah, so there are what I'm going to call hustlers out there. So they're trying to sell you doodads. They're trying to give you free stuff. Well, giving you free stuff like a bracelet they're going to expect something in return mm -hmm. and they're going to hound you and you're going to feel guilty and you're just going to want to be left alone so you're going to give in and give them some money and then they won well i knew about this before going in and someone gave me a bracelet i'm like oh shoot i'm not supposed to have this give it back. <laughs> i quickly gave it back no 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 it's free like dude no yeah. i ain't taking it okay because i know you're going to hound me for some money you get what you pay for it ain't free let me just say <laughs> that well, I accidentally took a free item, but I quickly learned and returned it. <laughs> we did some other things right as well. And some of those things are just, what are some of those things? <laughs> Truthfully, just wandering, literally just wandering through the streets. We discovered some of our favorite restaurants, which were way better than some of the ones closer to the tourist area. And we heard someone say that well, the standard drops because they know they don't really have to impress. But if you go to the neighborhoods where everyone else is eating, the food is better. Well, we learned that and cheaper. Um, and some of our, some of my, I think yours too, favorite shopping was in these little neighborhoods that were kind of on the way to where we wanted to go. Yes, I can't believe that my favorite thing out of 
all of Rome was actually just walking the neighborhood streets mm -hmm. of like Trastefier. And then when we're leaving the castle and going to the Trevi Fountain, it takes you to some down side streets when you're doing offline Google Maps and walking mm -hmm. as opposed to taking uh, a taxi or other public transportation. But that was by far some of my favorite memories. And when we go back, we are definitely staying in the neighborhood again. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be walking the neighborhood streets. It just feels... Immersive. I mean, it, yeah. you're like instantly placed into a whole new culture and atmosphere. It's not like... I'm going to go to my hotel. I'm going to get in a taxi and be dropped off somewhere else. It's, I'm going to figure this out on my own, doing with just a tiny bit of research with some maps. And we did walk across the river and got on a bus one time. I mean, it just, but we walked it instead of getting on another public transportation. Yeah. And if you couldn't tell, this was our first time to <laughs> Europe. Yes. About a lot of research, a lot of walking. I mean, for instance, we took. 20 to 27,000 steps a day for those two days each. Uh, and if you do have newer shoes, get some moleskin. I did have moleskin. I will link that in the description as well because that is cheap and it's a lifesaver. You can have literally an open blister, put that on. I used that uh, growing up playing soccer, having blisters, and it works perfect, <laughs> even as a um, more mature adult. So we talked about all the things that we did do and what we learned, but what were some things that you would possibly do differently? Stay longer. <laughs> of course. I mean, is two days enough? It was a lot to cram into two days, but I think it gave us enough of a taste of, we really want to go back. Yeah. And I, I mean, and I would use more public, staying longer than, than I would use more public transportation, like the trains to, to visit some of the other cities and do either mm -hmm. day trips or spend a couple of days there. But honestly, with being able to work remotely, it's like in my mind, I'm like, what if we just brought the whole family and spent, you know, a couple weeks there? Or, I mean, a couple weeks there. We actually ended up meeting a couple of uh, girls going abroad mm -hmm. and they were spending 30 days there um on the airplane as a span or italian not spanish immersion <laughs> program <laughs> although if you know spanish you can understand some italian fairly easy uh but yeah i think that would be great just to spend more time there and not only two days i get like vacation is limited mm -hmm. uh and when you go someplace new it's usually go 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 uh and we had a combination of go 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 and a little bit of relaxing but well, then we got on a cruise too. Yeah. So we had a full, I full cruise itinerary. But some things that I think I wish I would have. I'm gonna call it wish I. Pause. You all right. No, that hurt. So things that we would do differently would be not falling off the chair. Yes. And then not hitting the record button to unpause and. Now we have to re-record this part. So what would we do differently besides not Not, not listen to you about sitting on the cushion to be taller in the video. So I'll just, you know, maybe do this. Yeah, that. so to re-record, <laughs> like, I had this sitting on the chair so she'd be taller. <laughs> and apparently that wasn't a good idea. No. So with my sore butt, let's talk about things we would have done differently. Um, doing Trevi Fountain at night, they highly recommended that because they light it up and it's super beautiful and it's not very crowded. It's when the tourists are all gone pretty much and there's not a lot of people, I wish we would have sucked it up, gotten a cab and seen it at night and we didn't do that. Not get a cab, walk, right? <laughs> it was a little far in the dark. Is there, been... any, is there anything else you would do different? For me, I feel like we should have learned at least the basic phrases of Yes, we should have learned language. more like Where's the bathroom? Can I have the check, please? But we did do everything in English. And, and to be fair, we were understood by everybody, but we should have learned at least a little bit. And we also didn't learn really any history about what we were seeing. So we really just were like, oh, there's some ruins. Let's take, we weren't really yeah. we, we knowing were, why or what it, the significance was, which is kind of shameful. But. We're thrifty, we're on a budget. We want to pay for the private mm -hmm. tour. We didn't even pay for the audio tour, and next time, we're, but that might have taken longer. We might not be able to see as many things as what we're thinking. So, if you want to know how much money we saved and more of an in depth review of all the items you saw, make sure you watch this video right here or this video here. This is Brian. 
and Mrs. Tips. Tips for cruisers. We'll see you over in the next video.